What's up, guys, and welcome to One Take. I'm Gil, and I'm here with my brother, Alun. Say hello. Hello. And tonight, we're going to be talking about some news, some of the big pop culture movie news stories of the week. And to start off, Alun, we've been watching The Mandalorian. Right. You can hear uh, episode one of the podcast, where we did a deep dive into the first two episodes. We've been enjoying the show, right? Yeah. I'm really enjoying it, but I've got some bad news. What? Some really bad news. Uh Uh-oh. I know what you're thinking when you watch this show. And by the way, spoilers for The Mandalorian, that what we're about to talk about has been revealed by Disney Marketing. So I don't think it's considered a spoiler anymore, but just in case, you, know, you should watch The Mandalorian first. But I know what you were thinking when you were watching this show, Baby Yoda. You yeah. wanted to have a little Baby Yoda doll <laughs> you could hang out with, finally yeah, yeah. get that friend you've always been looking for, what? but you can't do that. Because there's no toys for Baby Yoda. Oh, no. (laughs) Because, so you know, a lot of times people will get leaks about an upcoming movie through the merchandise. They'll see designs for the toys, so they'll know what Thor looks like in Endgame before any trailers come out. So to avoid spoiling that Baby Yoda is in or was in The Mandalorian, they didn't have any merchandise ready. But, don't worry. They just unveiled some t-shirts. I think there's going to be some lunch boxes too. And they said some plush toys are, are going to be coming in the next few weeks. But maybe not in time for Christmas. Oh, no. Right. <laughs> so I guess we don't really have a whole lot to say about that one, right? <laughs> uh, I mean, it sucks for Disney. That's a lot of money they could have made. Yeah, it's true. But I bet they'll... I th- People are worried they're not going to have plush toys and stuff out for Christmas. I think they'll have it out. Yeah, how long can that take? Yeah, I mean, you could probably 3D print a Baby Yoda tomorrow if, I, if you needed oh, to. For sure, yeah. Are you going to be rushing out to buy some Baby Yoda? Maybe we can sell some Baby Yodas on Etsy. Do we? Is that a copyright? I don't think so. You can say it. As long, no, I mean, can we sell oh. <laughs> Baby Yoda on Etsy? <laughs> yeah, I've seen a lot of... like I always see like little Zelda figurines. Really? Yeah. Maybe as long as it's um as long as it's a spoof. So maybe we'll make it with like a really big head or something. Yeah, it's gonna be parody. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this whole podcast is parody. We can talk about anything we want. <laughs> uh so speaking of Star Wars, JJ Abrams has been making the rounds doing interviews about the rise of Skywalker. And by the way, I've already got my tickets. I got five tickets for Thursday opening night. So it's not going to be like Avengers, where you and I are scrambling to find tickets the night of. Yeah, how long ago did you get these? I bought the the, the night. So they released a trailer of a few weeks back, and that night is when they started selling, pre-selling tickets. Nice. So and I got them as soon as... You it, don't even know if we're going to have five people total with us. Yeah, I have a feeling we'll probably have two people. <laughs> me, you, <laughs> you and me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have uh, seats for our snacks. And jackets. Or here, one take contest. <laughs> See the movie with Gil and Alun. <laughs> uh, so part of the um, part of what J.J. Abrams has been talking about in all of these interviews he's been doing is how he intends for Rise of Skywalker, the upcoming Star Wars film, he intends for it to have a satisfying conclusion to what they're calling the Skywalker saga. This is episode nine, so it's supposed to conclude... This trilogy, Ray, Poe, all of them, but also the trilogy of trilogies, all nine movies. So I'm curious, do you think that they can pull it off? Well, okay. So they intend on having a satisfying ending. Right. Did they also intend on making the last two movies satisfying? <laughs> uh, I would, I th- uh, yes, I think so. Were you satisfied? Well, <laughs> Look, <laughs> when I heard there was a new Star Wars coming, Force Awakens, the one thing I said is I hope we get a new Death Star. And, they, <laughs> and I hope it's bigger. And they gave me that. So, Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, In all honesty, my view of the current trilogy of Star Wars movies is I love the characters. Ray, Poe, the rest of them. Who's the other guy? BB-8. BB-8. Ray, Poe, who's the other guy? Uh, all of them. I love all <laughs> those new characters. Uh, but I felt like part way through Force Awakens, it kind of turned into... I mean, they brought the Death Star back. 
I didn't need to see that again. Yeah. And then Last Jedi, I actually thought Last Jedi was pretty good. But the whole casino sequence Ooh, yeah. was abysmal and embarrassing for a Star Wars movie. Yeah, yeah. Since when is Star Wars about like saving the animals? Yeah. So Yeah. So yeah, I guess <laughs> I haven't found it very satisfying. And it also just to me, it doesn't feel like there's momentum going into this final movie where there's no part of me where I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see what happens with blank. Like with The Matrix, as bad as that ended up being in uh, 2 and 3, mm-hmm. there was at least a logical place it was leading. We're going to see the final showdown between Neo and Agent Smith. With this, like, what are we waiting for? I mean, what's it, like, what's it about? <laughs> right. I mean, there isn't like a cl- there's no clear character arcs. There's no, I mean, the story. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. It seems like it's just another very basic good versus evil. Yeah. Which I mean, I know that's the whole point, but I feel like there should be more there. Right. Well, there is. I mean, to be f- so, uh, I'm looking forward to Rise of Skywalker. I'm gonna enjoy it. I enjoyed the last two movies. But I just can't help but feel the lack of, of hype. I don't really feel like I'm about to see the final quote-unquote Star Wars movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, part of it might be... Okay, by the way, spoilers for Last Jedi. Part of it might be because every character that I was invested in from the original mm-hmm. trilogy or the original series is, is dead, mostly. Except for... Leia, yeah, I but. mean, for me, I was hoping... I thought these the, this trilogy of trilogies... I wanted to see them be about the characters we know and love. Right. And really, episode seven wasn't, it It didn't seem connected to me. It seemed like a reboot. Right. With brand new characters. And I have nothing against those characters. I, I would love to see them in their own trilogy, perhaps. Right. You know, not take the place of the characters that I wanted to see have a final satisfying ending to their stories for not right. just by you know killing them all yeah yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> even though if you look at the cast for uh rise of skywalker mark hamill is like number two or three so i'm assuming we'll see force ghost luke we we'll probably won't see force ghost han solo because he wasn't a jedi right right we still got chewbacca yeah Chub- you know what chewbacca's still around and leia leia in the yeah movie. Still i know there. They, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's sad. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Finn, that was his name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway. What about the other girl? Finn's girlfriend. Oh, Rose. Oh, Rose. Rose. That's right. That's right. So yeah, looking forward to it. I, I mean, I know they're going to try and give it a satisfying conclusion and make it connect back to the original trilogy with the return of Palpatine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you don't seem... <laughs> I saw nothing on your face when I said that. Oh, I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. I hope it's good. Yeah. I hope it's great. Right. If you watch the uh, the precursor to the One Take podcast, we had a couple of One Take roundups <laughs> is what we called them at the time, and my entire goal in those was to find something <laughs> that would move one's needle. He doesn't care about anything. <laughs> <laughs> I care about Mandalorian. That's true. I, I really enjoy it. Yeah. You know, that might be another reason why this last movie doesn't feel, doesn't, it's not super impactful for me. Because to me, it's not the end. I have Mandalorian. Yeah. I'm really enjoying it. More so than I've been enjoying these movies. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's part of it too, is they want to say it's, it's the conclusion of the Skywalker saga. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, I guess I kind of feel like that already concluded. They're all dead. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and and then, like you said, there's plenty more Star Wars out there and on the way. You've got The Mandalorian. We know there's more movies in the works. Apparently, John Favreau, who is uh, making The Mandalorian, is going to be much more heavily involved in the future of the Star Wars franchise. So that might be something to make you know, us happy. He's great. Yeah. Like, you know, all his work is at least good. Like, d- has, has he made anything bad? You would know. Uh, he's starred in some bad stuff. Foggy in uh, the Daredevil movie. Anything that like he produced, directed, something. I mean, not as far as I know. Well, th- you, did you love the new uh, Lion King? Uh I mean, it, it was fine. Yeah, it was just. I mean, 
it was the cartoon version just turned it to realistic into a photo reel. Yeah. And I just looked it up to confirm that yes, John Favreau did direct that movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah you were right. Uh yeah, I mean it was it's fine. Yeah. But I mean it's not like he had to come up with anything original there. Yeah, true. All right. But yeah, but you're saying you do like John Favreau. Yeah. And as an actor too, one yeah. of my favorite movies of all time. Swingers. Swingers, that's yeah, right. It's a great movie. And didn't I didn't mention her once today. <laughs> <laughs> you quote that a lot. Yeah, it's weird coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, speaking of Han Solo, Harrison Ford is going to be coming back to uh, star in a TV series as a character who is accused of killing his wife, but he maintains his innocence. The Sound fugitive? familiar? That's right. Huh. It's not a fugitive sequel. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is that just a coincidence? Just a coincidence. Uh, have you ever seen that cut um, or that montage on YouTube where they take every my wife, yeah, my, my wife. wife, my yeah. wife, <laughs> my family, my daughter, <laughs> my wife? That that reminds me of the Jack Bauer ones. Where's the bomb? Where's the virus? Where's my daughter? Yeah, <laughs> where did you take her? <laughs> yeah, Harrison Ford. The joke is that Harrison Ford has starred in many roles about a character whose wife or daughter or family member is harmed or kidnapped. Uh, and then, anyway, so this new TV series he's going to be in is called The Staircase. It's based off of a docu series, so it's based on a true story from 2004. They had some new episodes come out on Netflix in 2018 about a guy named Michael Peterson, who is accused of killing his wife, Kathleen Peterson. It's called The Staircase. He's accused of having pushed her, her down the staircase. Uh, no. Huh? Yeah, pushing her down the <laughs> staircase. <laughs> And um, basically, what I thought was interesting is uh, the story kind of, you know, it's he, he's still in prison, I believe, and he ended up doing what's called an Alford plea, where, you know what an Alford plea is? No. An Alford plea is basically, there's enough evidence, uh, to, to sufficient evidence, th- so that you put in a guilty plea, but you maintain your innocence. So you basically say... Look, if we if this goes to trial, you're probably gonna convict me. But I'm not saying I did it. But I'm just gonna put in. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna, admit, I'm gonna say fine. I'm guilty, but I didn't do it. <laughs> uh, and basically, yeah. So that's gonna be Harrison Ford. Hmm. Doesn't move your needle. See, is, is this a drama? Like action drama? Probably a drama. Just pure drama. Drama. So he's, he's, a, he's not running around with a gun. No, he was a novelist. Michael Peterson. So I don't think he probably know. It sounds like a novelist name. It does, yeah. yeah. By Michael Peterson. But it'd be one of those BS things where it says, like, Michael Peterson's blah, written by, yeah. you know. It's <laughs> like, wait, Tom Clancy came out with a new book? I thought he was dead. <laughs> yeah, but it's Tom Clancy's blank, written by somebody else. Michael Peterson. A ghostwriter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's talk. This is something that'll get you excited Joker. You were a fan of that movie? Uh, yeah. You were like weirdly a fan of that movie. You liked it too much, <laughs> I felt like. Oh, <laughs> it, just, it was awesome. Yeah. I love the talk show scene. Yeah, it's tense. By the way, we're not going to spoil anything, though. There's a talk show. Yeah, what you see in the trailer? The movie. But I think we should, we should probably open. You know what? Let's save the Joker story for the end of this episode so we can have a little spoiler talk. Because <laughs> basically, there was talk of a potential sequel. And I want to get into that a little bit. Okay. So uh, don't worry if you haven't seen Joker yet. We're going to go to another topic. (laughs) Sonic. Yeah. So (laughs) what was your impression when the original Sonic trailer came out a few months back? Uh, Basically what everyone else's reaction was. I thought it was horrifying. What was more horrifying, the Sonic trailer or the trailer for Cats? Uh, Sonic, just because... It, like I don't understand how they did that. Like they had the material for reference, and they just threw it out the window. And it, it kind of felt like a personal attack, right? Because you know, part of my childhood, cats. Uh, I'm not sure I was gonna <laughs> show any interest in that, no matter what. You were like, "What are they done to cats?" Yeah. <laughs> It is definitely a creepy trailer. The cats, and I've I've talked to people who watched the who saw the play. Yeah, and they told me that they looked creepy in the play too. So we all should have expected this. Really, apparently, at least according to 
This one person I talked to at work. Oh, <laughs> we should get them on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Answer for this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I had the same reaction. I thought it was grotesque. Yeah. It was like you take some of the still images of what <laughs> Sonic looked like, and it's it's off-putting. Dude, his teeth, his, his nose, his eyes. His eyes. Nothing. His hands. If, if you saw a picture and someone said, what is this? You would you would guess that it's like Danky Kank. Remember <laughs> that meme? Yeah. <laughs> How do we explain that for people unfamiliar? Uh Basically, someone came up with a meme involving a character named Donkey Kong, like Donkey Kong, but misspelled, and it was just like weird, grotesque version of Sonic. <laughs> but it wasn't as bad as the Sonic we saw in the actual Sonic trailer. Yeah. But the backlash was so bad online that the studio actually went back and spent, I mean, tens of millions of dollars. I heard it was actually a pretty low amount, considering. Oh, really? I think. The fact check. Let's look this yeah, up. I think, I'm gonna guess five million. I, I, I read 30 million. Hmm. How I might much? Be wrong. I just remember reading that it wasn't as it, like that expensive. All right. How much did it cost? Initially, the figure of $35 million for the redesign cost was being thrown away, thrown, thrown around. That was initially. Let's keep reading, though. This is entertainment.ie. It's not affiliated in any way with one take, so we can't <laughs> confirm. Uh, oh, yeah. There you go. $5 million. Wow. That's not bad at all. No. Wow, all right. Well, so anyway, so they redesigned Joker. Uh, Joker. They redesigned Sonic. <laughs> well, they also redesigned Joker. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> they redesigned Sonic. And what do you think? New design. I mean, it looks great. <laughs> That's what it should have looked like the first time around. How do you feel? So one, uh, one characteristic of the original Sonic design from the video games, and actually the original designer, the creator of Sonic, tweeted, in Japanese, but I saw a translation, that he was disappointed and has a hard time getting past the fact that they changed this one aspect of the character. His arms? No. Oh, because his arms are supposed to be tan. They made them blue and furry. Oh, really? No, yeah. that's not what he was talking about. What else was it? What do you think? Uh, he's got teeth now, but they're smaller teeth than the original design. It's the eyes. Oh, okay. They're no longer connected. Yeah, in the yeah. original design um, from the video game, Sonic's eyes are connected. Yeah. I, you know, I'm actually okay with that here. I get they're trying to make him more realistic. That's the one thing they had to change from the original like video game design to make him look like he fits in this world. Right, right. <laughs> At least, that would have yeah. If his eyes were connected, it would just raise too many yeah. questions. But they still kind of they still give an homage to that original connection right. because they put like a little tan fur there instead of blue. So it's still it's light colored. Yeah, in certain images, it, they, they look like they're connected yeah. just because of the light color in between. Yeah, I mean he looks he looks like he did in the video game. Yeah. And it, the the new trailer also pays more homage to the video game than the original mm -hmm. one did. Like instead of Gangster's Paradise, <laughs> they have some music from the video game yeah. or inspired by the video game. You even see you see some imagery from the video game. That's the thing I don't get with video game adaptations. When you're adapting a video game, what you're doing is you're trying to take IP, an intellectual property that worked, and for a video game, you're either going to get a great story, right? You take, if you were to make a Zelda movie, you'd be able to take an interesting story, interesting world, make a movie out of it. Sonic doesn't really have much of a story. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to take from it is the visual element, the things that are recognizable from the video game. And in the original design of Sonic, they threw all that away. Mm -hmm. And all they're going off of is name recognition. But what kids who... This is aimed at children, right? Yeah. Do kids even care about Sonic anymore? I, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> what would they know him from? From like Mario Sonic Olympics? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Super Smash Brothers? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So they're like, wow, they took one of the 150 characters in this game made a movie out of him for some reason. Yeah. Why, why didn't they put, you know, Pac-Man or King K. Rool in this movie? If they're gonna pick a character from Super Smash Brothers, right? Somebody with a more somebody somebody like Pac Man with more of a story to go off of than Sonic. <laughs> Wasn't he in that movie with Adam Sandler? Pixel. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he was in that, and he might. A lot of these characters were also probably in the Wreck It Ralph. Oh yeah, they should put him in Smash Brothers. Yeah, they should. Um, speaking of video games, the last video game I ever played 
and completed was what? Half Life. Uh, Half Life Two Episode Two. No, it's uh, Mario Party Three. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Yeah, Half Life Two Episode Two. That was that was the last video game series I was truly invested in. It was the last video game I ever played all the way through. And I've been waiting about what twelve years now? More or less. For a Half Life Three. And they finally announced Half Life Alex. <laughs> so everyone's making jokes of like uh you think, how do you count? It's like one, two, Alex, <laughs> four. <laughs> so Alon, what do we know about this new Half Life game that Valve just announced a few days ago? Uh so this is gonna be VR on uh Valve's own VR platform. That's right. The but Steam they Index. have Steam. It's called, I believe it's called the Valve Index. Valve That's Index. the name of the system. But they have said it will be playable on any VR headset. So Oculus, whatever Windows headset is called. Do they have one? They do. It's called like Windows in real life or something like that. Huh. Should we do, hey, let's do a quick fact check. All right, let's search. We're searching for Windows. It's not the Windows holograms. They have an actual Windows VR headset called... Windows Mixed Reality. Oh, I heard about that. They came out with something? Apparently, yeah. Huh. But it has to be... So I saw you glance over at our PlayStation VR headset. Yeah. You can't play it on there. Damn. It's got to be huh. one of these ones that you plug into a computer. I was hoping for a reason to use that again. It's I'm just, glad we don't have to. There's too many wires. Yeah, it's just collecting dust over there. I know. should just get rid of it. Yeah. Uh, anybody want to buy a PlayStation VR uh, is write an email info <laughs> at surecast.com or leave a comment on the video with your highest offer. <laughs> uh, so it's going to be virtual reality. It focuses on a character named Alex who was featured in Half-Life 2 as a supporting character. Mm-hmm. Here she's going to be playable. You'll be, you'll be playing as Alex. And this takes place between Half-Life 1 and 2. So in a sense, it's Half-Life 1.5. Uh, I'm excited for this game because I I find VR to be really impressive. The first time I put on a VR headset, I was standing in a pond, and I and I really felt like I was in a pond. It was amazing. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, I mean, in the virtual world, I was standing in a pond. Oh, okay. And I looked around, and I, I thought to myself, like, "Wow, it really looks like I'm in water." Thought you were like, you know, you were standing in a pond, and then you put on the VR headset. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I really don't want to be in this pond right now. I could be anywhere else. <laughs> but I'm excited for this game because I feel like VR has a lot of potential, but no game, in my opinion, has realized that potential. It's all been glorified tech demos. My favorite person of all time is Batman. And I finally got to be Batman with a VR game. And the game was over within an hour. Mm -hmm. But from what I hear, Half-Life Alex is going to be the length of an average single-player video game. Uh, I think Valve is going to put... I feel like they meticulously design everything. I'm hopeful that this is going to be the thing that makes VR worthwhile. What do you think that we talked about this earlier? You seemed less enthused. So I, I think you're right. If anyone can can do it, I think it's them. Right. You know, they take their sweet time, but usually the products they come out with are very impressive. Right. So I'm assuming they've looked at what's been done with other VR games, other VR shooters, and they thought to themselves, how can we improve this? Right. So, you know. I'm a little skeptical right now, but we'll see. Yeah, maybe, you saw the maybe, trailer. You said that you didn't really see anything in the trailer. That In the trailer, I didn't see anything that really blew my mind. Right. But, I mean, it's Half-Life. I love Half-Life. So, we'll see. Yeah, and they in the interviews where... So, they the way they announced it is they tweeted a couple days ago, we're excited to unveil Half-Life Alex uh, this Thursday. So, then today, the unveiling happened. It was basically an interview with a few of the people who worked on Half-Life Alex, and they talked about the fact that we we did see what other VR games were doing, and we did feel like they weren't taking full advantage of the potential of the system. And yeah, I mean, it seems like they're trying to make a great game, and 
this is this I'm hoping this is the thing that brings me out of my video game retirement. Half Life Alex. And uh yeah, we will sometimes talk about video games here. It's not all about movies and TV shows. <laughs> well, you know, Half Life is a very cinematic game. That's true. And we just talked about JJ Abrams. I believe in 2015 he actually optioned Half Life for a movie. But uh, obviously nothing ever came of that. So kind of like Half Life Two, Episode Three. Yeah. So yeah, after Half Life Two, they basically announced that they were going to go episodic, and they came out with Half Life Two, Episode One, which is a really weird way of phrasing it because it was a continuation Mm -hmm. of Episode Two uh, of Half Life Two. Then they came out with Episode Two. They released concept art for Episode Three, and they never mentioned it again. And then they started talking about how they might release Half Life Three. Right. What happened to Episode Three? Yeah, they just <laughs> skipped it. Well, now they just skipped both. So. But one exciting thing is, I mean, for basically 10 years now, Valve has been totally focused on multiplayer gaming. Stuff that you and I, we don't really care about. Nah. Because the first-person shooters are too hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys spend way too many hours to get good. Right. It's not worth it. <laughs> and it's like, we can either make podcasts... Or we can get good at Dota 2 or whatever they're playing. Team Fortress. Whatever <laughs> Team it is. Team Fortress Classic. <laughs> uh, so, but for, for the last 10 years, Valve has apparently been experimenting. They've started and stopped a lot of games. They probably did work on a Half-Life 3. And when Half-Life Alex comes out, um, they're going to be coming out with this feature on many of the projects that they started and stopped. They're going to talk about the road that led to Half-Life Alex. So maybe we'll finally hear a little bit about what happened with Half-Life 3. Maybe they'll actually release it after Alex. Yeah. They uh, they did mention, it, you know, depending on how this does, maybe we'll do more, you know, who knows? <laughs> we'll see. Um, so before we get back to the Joker, one more. Uh, speaking of things returning... And robots. Did we talk about robots at all? Uh, we didn't talk about robots. Droids, Star Wars. Yeah. There's the connection. <laughs> Robocop Returns. So Neil Blomkamp, a name you'd be familiar with, he directed District 9. Uh. And then he didn't direct anything since then that you've cared about. What What has he directed? Uh, Elysium. Uh, oh, the Matt Damon movie? The Matt Damon movie. Did I see that? Uh, no, you didn't see I that, didn't no. See um, Wally, but it wasn't Wally, it was a Chappie. Oh, no, I didn't you know, see Chappie. it. Chappie. But to be fair, we haven't seen those movies. I haven't heard great things. Uh, but I've, I love District 9. And he, since then, has attempted to create two... He's tried to resurrect two franchises. He was going to make an Alien movie that continued from the original Aliens. Ignored all, it was going to ignore all the sequels. Kind of like Terminator Dark Fate. That worked out really well. <laughs> um, and then he was going to... Then that didn't work out. So... Uh, Alien didn't happen. And then he said, you know what? What about RoboCop? Let's bring that back. Let's ignore RoboCop 2 and 3. Let's ignore the RoboCop remake. And let's do a sequel to the first RoboCop. Then that didn't work out. He left that project or got kicked off that project. I'm not sure. But apparently the project hasn't died because they just hired, similar to Neil Blomkamp, this is kind of an up-and-coming filmmaker, Abe Forsyth. He came out with this movie recently called Little Monsters which we should check out. It actually just premiered on Hulu about a month ago. It's a zombie movie, kind of a zombie comedy, I think. Heard really good things. 83% huh. on Rotten Tomatoes. And RoboCop Returns, the script was written by Ed Newmeyer and Michael Miner, who wrote the original RoboCop. Huh. But they brought someone in to do some rewrites. A guy named Justin Rhodes who uh, last worked on uh, Terminator Dark Fate. Oh, no. (laughs) I wouldn't buy that for a dollar. Oh, nice. (laughs) That's a reference. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) So why did you react that way? I mean, Dark Fate was was horrible. (laughs) Well, I'm going to say it. Yeah. It's a horrible movie. And would you you say that that it besmirched the legacy of Terminator? I mean, I think they it's been besmirched for quite some time now. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I know like this was supposed to be like scrapping all that 
you know, everything that happened after two. Right. So they've besmirched it yet again. That's right. And this one though was even worse because they brought back Linda Hamilton. They they uh, they tried to make it connected back to Terminator Two, so it was like, don't worry, we're unbesmirching it. And then within five minutes, <laughs> I was like, this isn't besmirched. This is just regular smirched. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but I within the first five minutes, I was like, oh no. And then it kept going, and I thought, oh, you know what? This is this isn't bad. This is actually pretty good. And then I thought. Oh my God! What have they done? <laughs> if you wanna, if you wanna hear me elaborate on that opinion, you can check out my review of Terminator Dark Fate video I posted a couple weeks ago at YouTube.com/slash One Take Vids. That's right. Link in the show notes. Uh, New Meyer, the one, the original writer of RoboCop. And by the way, just just to say, there is hope that this can be a good movie because Justin Rhodes was one of like seven writers on that movie. And I think he was a writer on one of the earlier drafts. So what we saw on screen, he might have had nothing to do with it. We can only hope. That's right. A new hope. Star Wars. Yeah, I thought that too. Yeah. <laughs> so Ed Newmeyer, who uh, he actually talked about this movie back in 2018, and he had this to say about RoboCop Returns. I don't know what he sounds like, so I'm just going to do a fake, just a voice. There's been a bunch of other RoboCop movies, and there was recently a remake, and I would say this would be kind of going back to the old RoboCop we all love, and (laughs) starting there and going forward. So it's a continuation, really, of the first movie, in my mind. So it's a little bit more of the old school thing. That was a lot of words just to say. (laughs) <laughs> we're making a sequel to the first movie. Right. And that's <laughs> that's what I wanted to say. I feel like all these people that are doing this, this is a tactic a lot of people have been using lately, right? Halloween. Let's pretend all the sequels didn't happen. Make a sequel to the first one. Terminator Dark Fate. Forget about all the sequels. It's a sequel to just the second one. Now they're doing it again with RoboCop Returns, but no one has the balls to say it. But with Terminator, they're like, well, this really brings back the DNA of the original. Yeah. You're making a sequel to the original. Just say it. Yeah. RoboCop Returns. Well, it's really getting back in touch with the old school thing. <laughs> it's been a lot. You're ignoring all the ones that happened after Terminator 1. Like with Halloween, I remember interviews with the people making that. And they're like, well, we're not ignoring the other ones. You know, it's just kind of like, it's as if they didn't happen. It's like <laughs> they happened in an alternate reality. No, it's not. <laughs> just say it. The other ones... Weren't to your liking, so you're erasing them. It's okay. Just say it. I would respect that. Exactly. Ed Newmeyer. All right. <laughs> <laughs> like if J.J. Abrams said, you know what? Forget about Force Awakens and Last Jedi. We're going to make a sequel to the original Star Wars. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> or what if they're like, forget about the last two seasons of Game of Thrones. We're going to remake them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of disappointed that D&D... What are their names again? I always forget. Don, Dave, Dave and Busters? <laughs> Dan and Johns? Dan and John. <laughs> David and uh, Dan, yeah. right? The folks who... Benioff. Uh, Benioff and Weiss. And Weiss. That's right. I was kind of disappointed to hear they weren't going to make their Star Wars movie. I was just curious to, to see what it was going to be like. And whether it was going to tie in, you know? They didn't deserve it. Oh, and by the way, RoboCop Returns, when Neil Blomkamp was working on it, there was talk of getting Peter Weller back. You know who that is? No. He played Jack Bauer's dad in 24. Oh. But he also played the original RoboCop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But how do you know all these names? I I listen because he, you want to know why? Because Peter Weller voiced Batman in the Dark Knight Returns animated movie, the adaptation of my favorite comic of all time. And I wrote it down in my Google Doc. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Dude, Jack Bauer's dad and brother. <laughs> uh, we won't get into that. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so, RoboCop Returns. Alun, the Alun excitement meter. Would you rate this as uh, Joker? A Star Wars? Or, I don't know. What, what, are you looking forward to this movie? Yeah, I Re- am. Really? Yeah. Well, <laughs> why? Well, it seems like... From what you've said so far, I'm a little nervous about that one guy. Yeah, Justin but, Rhodes. Yeah, that guy. But it sounds like their heart's in the right place here. You know? They, they clearly want to make another RoboCop. They weren't satisfied with 
the remake they already made. Right. So, you know, maybe this time around, you know, we'll get lucky, lucky and they know what they're doing. Yeah, and the remake was a PG-13, glossy, just generic sci-fi action. What I'm hopeful about is R-rated movies are starting to do bigger and bigger business. Joker crossed the one billion mark recently. So I think that'll give studios more comfort in in making a RoboCop, you know, a sci-fi movie that was pretty violent. I think it was it was like X rated when it first came out or something, and they cut it down to an R rating. Huh. It was nudity in that. Oh no. And violence. Oh yeah. <laughs> So I'm, you know, I'm curious. We'll follow this one. We'll follow this one closely. We'll see what happens. All right. We mentioned it already. Let's get back to Joker. We talked about this briefly last night, but I wanted to get into it a little bit more. So uh, yeah, you love the Joker. Yep. I thought it was pretty good. I liked it a lot. I love Joaquin Phoenix's performance was incredible. And yeah, you know, I I really liked the movie. I really well, enjoyed it. I mean, li- you know, you say I love it, and you know, I do. I think all the criticisms you have i probably agree with all of them right i think for me just overall i just i just really enjoyed the movie yeah me too yeah i mean there there are enough great moments to make up for the things i didn't really like very much yeah and oh we should say spoilers for joker so if you haven't seen joker yet you've had enough of one take for today you can shut the podcast off go watch the movie and then listen to the last few minutes of this Save it on your iPod and come back to it. <laughs> uh, so yesterday there were reports that they were going to make a sequel to The Joker. Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix were in talks to return. Not only that, supposedly Todd Phillips, the director, was in talks to adapt other DC characters for gritty origin stories. Then about an hour later, the report came out that, yeah, none of that was true. What an emotional roller coaster. I know. And then Todd Phillips later said, look, I don't have the exact quote here, but basically he said, we're not talking about a sequel yet. We're not ruling it out, but there have been no talks. We haven't approached Joaquin Phoenix. In other, in other interviews, he said, hey, if we can come up with something really compelling, we don't want to do the rise of the clown prince fighting Batman or whatever. It's not what we want to do. We've got to find something that interested us, just like the first one. And then we'll think about coming back. And, and obviously, the studio wants them to come back because, like I alluded to earlier, a billion dollars. That's a lot of money. That's more than it costs to make the new Sonic. <laughs> Way more. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. You know, uh, I don't think... We've already seen the Joker fight Batman multiple times. And, you know, in this universe, in the Joker movie, Batman's still a kid. Like, we have plenty more years to see the Joker character develop. Right. And, you know, the what made that movie great, it was a, it was a character study. It wasn't, a, it wasn't just a standard superhero villain movie. Right. So, we, we could keep exploring this character. I think there's a lot more to learn about him. And I think it would be really interesting to see this variation of Joker... Uh, start gaining followers and see what that would be like with right. this Joker. Yeah, I think it, in a, in a second movie, if he's in a leadership position, I talked a little bit about this last night. It's really intriguing to wonder what would he be like. We saw a character in the first movie who could barely take control of his own life, and now he's going to have this whole following of people that are going to be looking to him potentially for leadership. What's he going to do? I don't know. <laughs> I want to see, though. I'm, I'm interested to see that. Yeah, me too. What about the uh, allusion to potentially adapting other DC characters in a similar way? I mean, if they do them right. <laughs> That's your answer to everything. <laughs> well, yeah. well, if it's good, I like it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just... I Whenever I hear that a studio is thinking of doing something like this, I kind of think back to, like... X Men Origins, yeah. like Wolverine. It's like just individual stories about villains. I, I just, I don't know. I worry that they're gonna be inspiring each other too much, and you right. get this weird vibe where they're all just kind of the same thing. But although they never even did the other origins, they just did the one. But yeah, that's right. It well, because really it out. flopped so horribly. Yeah. I mean, listen, they do it with they do it with superheroes, right? 
Yeah. I guess you could do it with villains too. Yeah, we don't love that though. I mean, Marvel's starting to feel a lot of like very... Yeah. Those movies are starting well, to be really right. similar to each other. Exactly. So I guess I have the same concern about them trying to do the same thing with villains. Yeah. No, I 100% agree. I, I was intrigued by it when the original report said... The original report made it sound like Todd Phillips had the idea and he went to WB and was like, yo, I got an idea for another... I don't know if this is how he talks. <laughs> hey, yo, I got another idea for you. You like Joker? What do you think about some of these other DC characters? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> if it was a passion project for him and he was as intrigued by another character and he had a unique idea, I would be interested. But if it's... WB saying, hey, Joker made a lot of money. Can we make a Joker out of one yeah. of these other characters? I mean, also, they start if they do this, they started with the best DC villain or, or best Batman villain already. So, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I guess the other ones could have interesting stories too, but uh, Mr. Freeze? How about didn't you cry like a baby in that one episode of the animated series where he's like, Nora? Oh yeah. I think I saw that on YouTube. He cries uh, a snowflake. And it turns out his wife is alive anyway. She was just frozen. And Batman unfroze her in a future episode or something. That could be a movie. <laughs> right? And there's <laughs> something in the movie with his wife, right? Yeah. With Batman the, and Robin? The Arnold Schwarzenegger one? Yeah. Was that Batman and Robin? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so... <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, I think it's going to happen. I, at first, I, I would have said there's not going to be a Joker sequel just because Joaquin Phoenix and Todd Phillips were so protective of it. They were like, no, I said, one and done. We're not doing one of these dumb superhero movies, right? We're going to make one complete film. It seems to me like Hollywood, they're, they're not really, first of all, obviously they want money, but also it doesn't seem like they're afraid to try anything anymore. Like, I mean, they're ma they're making a freaking Gladiator too. Yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah. And all this stuff when I was a kid, I dreamed of. It's like I'm getting all of it now, and I'm kind of like most of it. I'm like, yeah. Animaniacs is coming back. That one I'm excited for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I think we could probably end it there, right? Yeah. <laughs>